So we're back for round two with Lily, the Volvo 240. So in the previous video on this car, you will have seen me remove the gearbox. Find a very worn clutch and a few other things as well. I'm gonna replace the pilot bearing, the rear main seal and things like that, the clutch cable and so on. So there we go, so it's a, it's a three piece kit. Um, I wouldn't consider anything else. It's got the new throw out bear in there. Yeah, so we got a nice new pressure plate and uh, the disc. Yeah, let's get these bits fitted then. We'll get underneath the car again and uh, yeah, we'll start with these bearings and seals and things like that. I've got a couple of tricks to show you guys, so let's get into it. So someone said as well that the pivot ball on the clutch lever can wear out and that can give you a problem and that makes total sense. I had problems getting into first and reverse. Felt like the clutch wasn't disengaging properly. I don't really know how to take... Okay, so that comes off like that. We never figure out how to get that back on there. There's plenty of grease in there, but there's also plenty of dirt in there. There's a lot of hard stuff here. The grease is, yeah, it's wasn't really doing anything. That's rock hard. So yeah, that's not that good, is it? Okay, so there's a 13 mil bolt head on the back. Oh, what's all that in there? So yeah, I've cleaned up the shaft as well. I've got the old grease off it. Obviously we'll re-grease it and things like that. I have noticed I can wiggle that a little bit and I don't know if that's normal, to be honest. I know that it gets centered on the pilot bearing, which we're about to change, but I'm not sure if even without that, you're supposed to get this kind of movement. still needs doing doesn't it yeah, it's pretty rough it's a lot of clutch isn't it yeah I'm no expert I don't need to tell you guys that but having a look at this flywheel to me it looks okay if you've got like blue blue spots like blue tinted spots that's from heat you can see where there are some some sort of discolorations and and things like that but there's nothing too severe when you've got like big patches that really stand out you can see where it's been like really like overheated and then you can get like distortion and like warpage and things like that obviously weakens it but this just looks normal doesn't it just normal use nothing too severe and really the most important thing as well is there's no cracks in it really so here we go rear main seal i'm not looking forward to this it's a very old seal that's in poor shape and it looks like it wants to come out easy I'm moving it there and you can maybe you saw the oil the camera's not very close but I can't have it any closer yeah it's just gonna come out nicely look like so yeah it's in such poor shape because it's so old rock hard you can see it's just broken there look it's I mean it's rock hard you see all the oil coming out but to be fair to it you know it's 34 years so yeah did a good job didn't it really pilot bearing so i'm going to show you a little trick that i learned from the bearded wrencher here on youtube i always call him the bearded wrencher but i don't think that's his name i think it's bearded wrencher not the bearded wrencher i don't think he'll mind Let's somehow get this clip out And I don't want it to go flying. It 
It's rough. It doesn't move much. It doesn't feel like it's You can hear it rough. Now the bearded rancher, he uses bread, stale old bread. I haven't got any bread, so I'm going to use tissue paper. Makes your workspace kind of wet as well, which isn't so good. There we go. So now another 10 minutes probably digging all this out of here. I'm going to use grease. Already the things come out of it, the metal ring. <laughs> Damn, it's probably going to be tricky, isn't it? It'd be nice to use the old seal to help me, but it's in such bad shape. I don't know if it's a good idea. It's going in a bit too easy. This doesn't happen very often, but I've got the wrong pilot bearing. It's too small. Woke up one morning, the first thought in my head before I even opened my eyes, should I have installed that seal with grease? Jumped online and sure enough, no, I shouldn't. That was an absolute mistake. So I don't know, maybe the Volvo gods came to me at night into my dreams or something and, you know, they're looking after me. Not really sure, but either way, I took it out and I damaged it on removal, of course. I thought, well, hopefully I can get it out, clean it off, put it back in, but no. Sorry about the uh, enthusiastic um, whatever's going on back there, leaf blowing or something. Um, yeah, so guys huge delay again this has been going on for a long time now because we got the wrong parts and then i made a mistake and yeah anyway we're going to carry on with it today i've ordered two crankshaft seals because i thought if i make another mistake which is probable at least i have another one uh, i wish i'd ordered two the first time round. so i think what i will do is use the thinnest smear of oil on the outside you can do that even the haynes manual and things like that says you can lubricate the outside of the seal The inside has got a fair bit of oil on it. The outside, like I say, one drop that's just been spread around the whole thing, basically, just so none of it is completely dry. Um, hopefully, that'll do it. Oh, this almost pushes in, which is a bit of a worry. Yeah, gosh. It goes in too easy. It makes me think, well, then that's definitely a reason why I shouldn't have put oil on there. I've got oil on the inside, silicon on the outside right next to it, which is just great. Try not to get those two mixed up. What a mess, I don't like using silicon like, like this, like it's, no, it's just everywhere. I just want to see if I can get it all the way where I want it with fingers without sort of, yeah, it will do it. I mean, I am using like a lot of pressure, but. And then I put it in too far and then the tears start. Yeah, 
I don't know, let's just see. I'm going to make sure these are tight, which they weren't really. Because I hear that these can come out. Actually kind of loose. So, missing Volvo, she rang the local machine shop in this village here. It's the only one for quite a few miles. It's where we took the head from this car. She basically asked for a price and availability to machine the flywheel. And they said, no, we, we don't really do that here. And then he said, why do you want to do it anyway? Do you want to increase power or, or something like that? He said, it's going to need to be balanced afterwards and all this kind of stuff. And that's what she came straight back and, and she told me that's what he'd said. I wasn't with her at the time. So I thought, oh, maybe she's used the wrong terminology uh, because as far as I'm concerned, it's it's an everyday thing, isn't it? Machining a flywheel, like it's not, they should know why we want that done. And, and it's not an uncommon thing to have done. Or so you'd think anyway. So she tried somewhere else. He's on holiday for three weeks. So, and no one else can do it. And he said, it's a dying art now and no one really does it anymore. And it's, and it, all this kind of thing. There's more as well. I haven't got another clutch fork. I've compared it against some others and got some opinions and I've ordered a new pivot ball and I think I'm gonna just reuse that arm. It doesn't look too badly worn. It still feels quite thick. There is somewhere there, but it's really, I think it's it's not that much. It's not that bad. I think there's some good quality grease in there. Plenty of it. I think it should be okay because I'm a bit concerned about the play in the input shaft on the gearbox as well. I think that's a little bit on the on the excessive side obviously the, the gearbox has done you know about 200,000 miles i'm going to fit it going to take my chances we've got a new clutch cable and uh yeah fresh oil in the box and we'll just drive it you know and we'll, we'll see how we get on we get this volvo genuine replacement I'll give it a rest. Don't they go for it, those little things? That'll be nice and smooth. I hope that should do it and then at least it's got something in there and it should keep that wear off. on this as well it's going to go into the pilot bearing oh and of course we'll grease all this up as well so we'll put that on the flywheel side And you look at it and it can get a bit trippy because you kind of look from a certain angle and it looks like it's too far over one way too high too low two to the left two to the right and uh, we'll see won't we if the tool got it straight or not yeah so a chain through this part, that's where the gear stick goes into, the gear lever, chain through that hole, through a bolt, breaker bar. I hope it doesn't drop right now. Okay, this 
is still going to be bullshit. There's no way. There's no way. It's not <laughs> to do. Okay, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. Okay. It's not that heavy. But, you know, like anything, when your arms are above you, even if it's a tin of beans, like, it only takes a few minutes, it becomes heavy. The weight of your own arms gets heavy once the blood drains out of them. It's touching at the back there, so how the f is that supposed to work? Just managed to cut myself on the pressure plate as well, somehow. run out of steam please go in oh I'm supposed to write on the clutch on the pressure plate the date and the mileage Time to take it back out again. I've got a feeling that this video could be quite long, or it's been long probably up until this point. And in the first part, you will have seen me do the prop and do all that sort of stuff. So you don't really need to see all the nuts and bolts again. I might just time lapse through it, skim through it, so we can get to the point where we can actually try and drive this car out of here. To be honest, I think if there are any problems with it, I'm just going to sell it. I'm not doing all that again. I'm going to start it first, run it a little bit, check for leaks, and then we'll see if we've got drive. So far, so good. Noisy, isn't she? So I'll put it about there, halfway, give or take, on each. Before, it had gone out of alignment as well. It was in the middle at the bottom, but on the top, it was all the way over. I don't know if I took any footage of it, it was like that. Off an angle, so of course that would, it wouldn't have helped either. So there we go, time to get it on the road, I think. Some noises and that, some noises, but it always had that. You 
still got that sort of howl from the rear once we get up near sort of 70 80 even over 60s sometimes you can hear she starts to howl uh, it's been like it it's ever since I put this axle in this car I've heard it so it's not really got any worse I don't think we we'll just have to keep an eye on it eventually I'm gonna have to do something about the rear end either put a new axle in or figure out what bearing it is and what's going on with it but yeah super nice super smooth pedal just on and off the clutch nice and smooth totally different I mean I didn't even notice that really before I noticed that of course the bike was high but the pedal you know the action felt okay but you really notice it when you put a new clutch in how different the pedal feels Sub 100 horses that this car now has. That's nice.